Welcome to the General Program Compliance Module. The general areas of program compliance include civil rights, school food authority monitoring, also known as the on-site review, local wellness policy, smart snacks, water, food safety, reporting and record keeping, outreach for the school breakfast program, and summer food service program. The civil rights section ensures there is no discrimination in any of the school nutrition programs. The questions cover these topics. That there is a non-discrimination statement on all program materials. If you have individuals or households who have limited English proficiency, that they too have equal access to program materials and are translated when needed. Civil rights training for staff who interact with program participants, including cafeteria staff, staff who make eligibility determinations, and secretaries who accept meal payments from parents. Your reviewer will also observe if the civil rights poster is displayed in meal service areas, accommodating students with special dietary needs, and procedures for receiving and processing discrimination complaints. The Injustice for All poster must be displayed in a prominent location in the food service area. It needs to be the 11 by 17 size. If you need more posters, please contact our office and we can mail more to you. Another general program compliance area is monitoring. The goal of monitoring is to ensure that school food authorities with more than one site are conducting a self-assessment of their own counting and claiming practices for each feeding site by February 1st of each year. ISBE recommends even districts with one site perform an annual on-site review of meal counting and claiming procedures. Although required for National School Lunch Program, we recommend you review both the School Lunch Program and the School Breakfast Program, especially if meal service times have different staff performing the meal counting function. If you identified a problem at any feeding site, you must ensure the site has documented and implemented corrective action for the problems identified. You do not need to send this to Springfield, but instead keep in your annual record keeping files each year. Depending on the timing when your reviewer arrives on site, if it's before February 1st and you've not conducted your on-site monitoring, then he or she will review last year's reviews. Schools play a critical role in promoting children's health, preventing childhood obesity, and preventing diet-related chronic diseases. To help foster a healthy school environment, each school food authority or other participating institution is required to establish a local school wellness policy. The policy must be available to the public. One of the easiest ways to do this is to post it on your school website. If your school does not have a website, Another way to do this is maybe post it in your handbook. During our review, we will evaluate to see what extent our individual schools in compliance are working towards goals of the local wellness policy. We want to see an organized effort to assess the current policy and make changes as needed. Therefore, keep any documentation on any wellness policy meetings that entails who, when, the agenda, etc. Overall, keep any documentation regarding your wellness policy efforts. Outreach to involve parents, staff, or community members must be documented. For example, you might send out a district-wide email to notify potential stakeholders about the opportunity to participate. Documentation must be available for the most recent review of the policy and the public must be made aware of the assessment. For example, if your policy states you will provide nutrition education in every grade each year, the Wellness Committee should do an annual assessment or evaluation if the policy met its goals. The next module is Smart Snacks or Competitive Foods. Smart Snacks are any foods available for sale to students on the school campus during the school day other than those meals reimbursable under the National School Lunch Program and School Breakfast Program. Your reviewer will observe meal service for breakfast and or lunch as well as the serving and dining areas and evaluate any foods available. This will include school stores, fundraisers, and vending machines within the selected school. 
You will need to have documentation of all foods and beverages sold within the school site selected. Again, that could be vending machines, school stores, or even a la carte. Also need to have documentation to show how these items are in compliance. This may be the Smart Snacks calculator printout, recipes, nutrition fact labels, etc. Furthermore, any documentation that identifies all fundraisers in the School Food Authority and any exempt fundraisers such as dates, the groups, items being sold, etc. need to be documented. During your review, we will also be checking to see if you're meeting the water requirement. Easy access to water is required during the lunch meal service and also must be available when breakfast is served in the cafeteria. Students are not required to take the water. There are a variety of ways schools can make water available. For example, schools can offer water pitchers and cups, a water fountain, or a faucet which allows students to fill their own bottles or cups with drinking water would be in compliance. Whatever method is used, the students must have access to water. While water is required to be made available to students, it is not considered part of the reimbursable meal, nor may it be substituted for milk. Another general area of compliance is food safety. As a school food authority, you are required to maintain a HACCP-based food safety program that covers any facility where food is stored, prepared, or served for the purposes of the National School Lunch Program, School Breakfast Program, or other child nutrition programs. This means the food safety plan should contain standard operating procedures for safe food handling when food is served on school buses, in hallways, school courtyards, kiosks, classrooms, or other locations outside the cafeteria. One food safety plan may be written for the entire district. However, each site must have the plan available. This includes satellite sites, for example, school where they do not cook, they are only serving. Your reviewer will evaluate freezers, refrigerators, dry goods storage rooms, and other areas to ensure purchased and USDA foods are properly stored and maintained. Therefore, temperature logs must be maintained. In addition, the reviewer will be observing to determine if the proper HACCP principles are followed. For example, are good personal hygiene habits practiced? Is cross-contamination of food prevented? Do staff monitor food temperatures? Are refrigerator and freezer temperatures monitored? Are food preparation and service areas clean? Are utensils and equipment clean and in good working condition? Does there appear to be the evidence of pests? For guidance on developing a food safety plan, refer to the website link handout, or you can go to our Nutrition and Wellness homepage, then clicking on the National School Lunch Program, then clicking on the HACCP Food Safety Information. This slide provides snapshots of available HACCP documents on our website. Another area of food safety are inspections. Program regulations require each participating school to receive a minimum of two food safety inspections each year to ensure good safety practices are followed. Each school is required to post the most recent food safety inspection report in a publicly visible location. Posting the report in the food service director's office or the food preparation area is not considered a location visible to the public. Posting the report in the cafeteria or school office would be acceptable. We recommend you make a copy of the original inspection report and post the copy. You may want to laminate the copy or display it in a plastic sleeve. It is your responsibility to have two inspections. However, if you do not receive a food sanitation inspection several months into the school year, you can fulfill the requirement by writing a letter to the local health department requesting the required two food service inspections for each site. Maintain a copy of the letter and have it available for review. A sample letter is available on our website. A new general area I will discuss now is outreach. If you participate in the school breakfast program, you have a special outreach requirement. At the beginning of the school year, 
when you provide households with a household eligibility application, you must also inform the families of the availability of the school breakfast program in your district. Furthermore, reminders of the availability of the school breakfast program must be sent multiple times throughout the year. The reminders may be done through the school district's website or other means normally used to communicate with households, such as a weekly or monthly newsletter. Another outreach requirement is associated with the Summer Food Service Program. The Summer Food Service Program is another child nutrition program available to institutions who serve children. Some school districts sponsor the Summer Food Service Program in their community. If you are a Summer Food Service Program sponsor or you are contacted by a Summer Food Service Program sponsor, you must notify your students of the Summer Food Program before the school year ends. This information may be posted on our website. I want to clarify that the Summer Food Service Program is different than the Seamless Summer Option. If you use the Seamless Summer Option, I will be discussing that program in more detail in the other Child Nutrition Programs module. This slide details some of the more common findings we see with general program areas. Civil rights training has not been conducted for the required staff. Again, remember, training must be done on an annual basis and keep the documentation, such as the agenda, having the staff sign in, or any materials or handouts you use for training. On-site reviews have either not been done or were not done by February 1st. This is an annual requirement. The reviews should be checked once completed to ensure all information has been documented. A written local wellness policy was not available. There is no written food safety plan. The template printed out from the website is only acceptable if it has been completed and will include the practices and procedures to be followed by your staff. Temperature logs have not been completed, or maybe they are available, however, staff are not using them. Once again, the general areas of review include civil rights, monitoring, the local wellness policy, smart snacks, water, food safety, reporting and record keeping, and outreach for the school breakfast program and the summer food service program. The general areas of review do not normally require fiscal action. However, withholding of program payments may occur in whole or in part to any school food authority for repeat or flagrant violations that are not corrected. The last big area I want to discuss applies to those school food authorities who contract with a food service management. The last big area I want to discuss applies to those school food authorities who contract with a food service management company. The final administrative and financial responsibility of the school meals program falls upon the school food authority. There can be a fine line of whose job it is when a food service management company is involved. During the review, we will check to ensure that access and wins is kept within the school district. We also look to see that all eligibility determinations are made by the school food authority as well as conducting verification. Furthermore, each school food authority must establish and approve all meal prices as well as retain control over the nonprofit school food service account. At least annually, you must conduct a reconciliation and determine if the food service management company credited you for the value of USDA foods. This is generally found on each monthly invoice with June's invoice showing the final crediting for the year. You are also responsible for maintaining an active advisory board composed of parents, students, teachers. This group meets periodically to make recommendations for menu planning. Again, keep documentations of those meetings. You must show us through your on-site monitoring reviews that you are checking the food service management company's operation of the program. Since the agreement of the school nutrition programs is with ISBE, it's your job to make sure the company is carrying out their responsibilities. As a participant in the federal child nutrition programs, you are required to maintain records and must be maintained for three years plus the current year so four years total. The current year began this October 1st. The specific program records to keep are listed on this slide and the next one. They include household eligibility applications, 
direct certification documentation, verification records, claims for reimbursement, meal count information, daily meal count edit forms or edit checks, menus, production records, and on to the next slide, civil rights complaints, on-site reviews, local wellness policy, food safety inspections, temperature records for the six most recent months, records of revenue and expenditures, the paid lunch equity tool, non-program food costs and revenue, audit reports and written responses. At the conclusion of the entire review, your reviewer will want to meet with you and all other pertinent staff to discuss the results of the review. The exit conference is a great opportunity for technical assistance, so please ask questions, especially if an area seems unclear. Within four to six weeks of the exit conference, the findings of the review will be conveyed to you in a written report. The written report will ask you to submit a written corrective action plan. The corrective action plan must address each violation with a plan on how to permanently correct the problem found. Your reviewer will evaluate your corrective action and he or she may get in touch with you for more detailed information. It is common for there to be some back and forth communication between you and the reviewer before the final corrective action plan is accepted. When the corrective action plan is finally accepted, we will issue what we call a closure letter. If there was fiscal action over $600, it would be at this time that those funds would be requested. Sometimes the funds are recovered in future claims. At other times, we request that you send the funds back to the state by mailing a check. If you have any questions as it relates to this section of this training module, please feel free to contact our office via phone or email. We appreciate your time in viewing this training module and hope you find it helpful.